around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun Smoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> some more pie, Kitty? You might as well, since Doc's paying for it. <laughs> no, thanks, Matt. I've had plenty. Yeah, what happened to make you such a big spender, Doc? Some forgotten relative leave you something in his will? <laughs> might as well, huh? Eh? Well, what do you mean, Doc? Well, you remember that cowboy got himself shot up in a long branch brawl? Oh, that was a year or two ago? There's been more than one of them. Well, I know that, but Kitty might remember this. She hmm? helped stop the bleeding until I got there. Oh, I remember, Doc. He didn't even have enough money to buy a beer. And we figured he never would have. Well, what happened to him? Well, sir, I had a letter from him this morning. He's had some kind of a payoff in California. And he sent me a $20 gold piece to pay me for what he called my medical services. Wow. Oh, that's fine, Doc. <laughs> I'm glad he made out. Yes, men like him don't often do it. And you don't often get paid, either. <laughs> well, you never know in my business. Dylan. Mr. Dylan. Oh, it's Chester, Matt, at the door. Oh. And you too, Doc. Hurry up. He means it, Doc. Excuse us. Oh, sir. He's gone back outside. Somebody must be hurt. I didn't hear any shooting. Now, there are other ways to get hurt, Doc. Well, we're here for the stage, Mr. Dillon. Oh. Yeah, that's... That man has been hurt, Matt. That's the shotgun messenger, Doc. Somebody must have held up the stage. Then. Mike got shot, Mr. Dillon. He's hurt pretty bad. Let me take a look. What happened, Chester? Well, I don't know for sure. I'd seen the stage come in just now, and Mike was driving. Mike was driving? Yes, sir, so I knew something was wrong. Then I could see he is hurt, too. Yeah. Yeah, but... Yeah, Doc. He's trying to say something. Make it fast, man. I got to get him up to my office. Mike, it's Marshal Dillon. What happened? Held up. Driver. Killed. Were there any passengers? No, no. Currency shipment, 20,000. Why did it happen, Mike? No, no, he's Look. going out, Matt. Mike, Mike, <laughs> try, please try, tell me, where did it happen? How many men? Huh? North Hat Creek. Two men. Ooh. That's all, Matt, he, he's unconscious. Yeah. I'll find a couple of men to help you, Doc. Chester, go get our horses. Yes, sir. And hurry. They went along here right now, Mr. Dillon. That cracked shoe shows up real plain. Yeah, they've been riding hard, too. But they must have slowed down or stopped for a while somewhere. I hope they didn't get no more sleep last night than we did. What's the matter, Chester? You getting old? I know, sir, it ain't that, but my gracious, two hours sleep, it just don't seem worth bothering about, that's all. Well, I hope our friends bother a little about sleep. Now, if I was carrying $20,000 in bills, I wouldn't never stop. Yeah? You'd have to be riding a pretty unusual horse. Though. Well, yes, I guess you're right. But... Wait a minute. Hmm? Looks like they did stop after all. What? They built a fire over there. Yeah, it was them, all right. Yeah, same tracks. I think we picked up a little time on them, Chester. Come on, let's pick up some more. <laughs> the shoveling started at the little town of Rome in New York State back in 1817. And on July 4th, 1967... 
the post office released a special sesquicentennial stamp there in honor of the big ditch they dug, which it says on the stamp in my album here was the Erie Canal. Now, in case you don't know, that canal went all the way from Buffalo on Lake Erie to the Hudson River, connecting the Great Lakes with the Atlantic Ocean. The biggest waterway ever built in the United States at the time, and it was done mostly by the Irish just over from the old country, <laughs> who, who did their digging with spit and muscle. <laughs> yep. Made lots of money for years on tolls. And the traffic and freight and people through the canal was mainly responsible for building up the Midwest and keeping business in the East busy doing it. Well, of course, the Erie Canal ain't what she used to be because the railroads do most of the job now. But the big ditch is still there, and so is all the history that went through it. Where am I to doing them men riding like they're stuck to the saddle? They're near dark again. Uh, they'll have to stop someplace along here pretty soon, huh? Well, I don't know. Hold up, Chester. Those tracks are heading down to those bushes along the creek here. Let's go easy. Yes, sir. Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Off yonder. Above the stream there, there's a shack. Oh, uh, yeah, I see it. You think they might maybe a hit out in it? Maybe. But I'm not going to ride straight up to find out. We'll leave the horses here. Yes, sir. I will circle around back. Just keep low. There's two horses tied up there. Uh-huh. Mr. Dillon, there they are. Yeah. All right, hold it, Joe. Heading for the horses. You got him. Yeah, but the other one's getting away. Oh, he's out of range. Chester, you go bring the horses up. I'll see about the man I shot. Huh? Well, ain't you going after the other one? He's got a pretty good head start, and it's near dark. I'm not going after him blind. Morning soon enough. All now go right. on. get my brother. Did you get wrecked? Not yet. You heard bad? Yeah. Yeah, I sure am. Chester. Yes, sir. Tie up those horses and come here. We'll carry him into the shack. Be right there. Mr. Dillon? Yeah. This fellow's horse. Well, what about him? Well, his leg's broke. He must have stumbled and there's time to get away. You reckon I better shoot him? All right, you can do it as soon as we get this man out of the shack. Easy. 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 All right, open the door, Chester. I'll keep hold of him. My head's locked. You suppose somebody lives in this forsaken place? Oh, I'll find out. Go ahead and knock. Anybody in there? Anybody in there? There's no need for any more noise at my door. Just finished telling you men you can't stay in my house. You don't need that shotgun, ma'am. We don't mean any harm. I intend to defend my home, sir. No rough men are going to tramp around amongst my fine things. You open the door a little wider, ma'am, and you'll see we're not the same men. I don't open my home to any strangers. I'm Marshal Dillon from Dodge City, and we got a badly injured man here. A United States Marshal? That's right, ma'am. Well, then I guess I'll have to let you in. But I don't hold with your Yankee government. I want that clear. All right, ma'am, fine. Come on, Chester. <laughs> now, you just show us where you want us to put him. If he hurt bad. Yeah, bad enough. Well... I suppose even a rough man has a right to die in the bed. But mind you, be careful of my things. All right, ma'am. We'll mind. I'd be careful. 
Here, Miller's horse, Mr. Jones. I'll bring the saddle. All right, bud. Hey, ain't things a little strange in there? A little? All that talk about not hurting her fine things. Why, there ain't nothing there that's worth carting away except maybe that old pine. Yeah, I know. Everything else is all cracked and broke. Why, most ladies wouldn't give that stuff house room. You gentlemen would care to join me. I fixed a small supper. Well, that's very nice of you, ma'am. I just say it's nice. Mr. Hanford, he's my husband. Mr. Hanford always said I could spot a gentleman right away. I could see you two were gentlemen as soon as we exchanged pleasantries there in the entryway. Well, thank you, ma'am. Mr. Proudfoot. Uh, ma'am? Please take your hat off my cherry wood piano. My land, ma'am, it, it can't hurt nothing. I do I... not allow anything to mar the finish of my beautiful cherry wood pine. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Here's your place. Please sit down. Thank right you. I don't imagine your wounded friend will be able to partake. Uh, no, Miss Hanford, he's not likely to come to for some time. That is, if he ever does. I can't imagine how he got his wound. I had seen him just a few minutes before you gentlemen. Well, Miss Hanford, ma'am, didn't you hear the shooting right outside your door? I have trained myself not to see and hear the ugly things of life. I just live here alone among my things. But uh, you, you said that you have a husband. My husband has been gone for two, three Four years now, Marsha. No, oh, I, I, I'm sorry to hear that, ma'am. Mr. Hanford, you'll never be content to live a quiet life. He thought he could when first we came here directly after the war. I had in mind he'd build me a new plantation. But, Marshal, just between you and me, Mr. Hanford didn't appreciate my lovely things. And one day... Well, one day he just moved on west. Oh, well, that's too bad, ma'am. I do not need your pity, sir. I'm content. Well, well sure, of course. I'd sir. be obliged if you gentlemen would sleep out there on the veranda. Veranda? Oh, well, that's all right, Chester. We'll sleep on the veranda. Uh, I, I am going to have to keep an eye on Miller, though, ma'am. I will watch over him, Marshal. Well, no, uh, that's not your job, Miss Hanford. I'm mistress of this house, Marshal Dillon. I will watch over him. I will call you if there's any change. As a matter of fact, I'll look to him right now. Well, all right, ma'am. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, Chester. Mr. Dillon, is that slanty old porch of Miranda? Well, it is to her. My, if she don't be all. towns in America have a lot in common, and yet they're each one of a kind. Take, for example, Valdez, Alaska. Since the earthquake on Good Friday in 64, folks have been building all over again. Folks like Max Wells, whose hardware store reared up and moved back two feet. In those awful hours, fuel tanks exploded, there were scattered fires, and the entire dock disappeared. Men drove to 35-mile roadhouse for help. But that was then. Now, Valdez is moving to solid ground five miles around the bay. New houses are up, the city hall and the freight dock are in, and children are buzzing over to the new Groden Harrison Elementary School. Valdez is pretty much well again. Jurists come to this ice-free harbor and visit Valdez and Columbia Glaciers, over which early adventurers climb to the gold field. But if your hometown is Valdez, you already know this. We only wanted to remind you, it's still there.
declare, Mr. Dillon, every time I dig a grave, the ground seems harder than the last time. Our grave digging isn't supposed to be easy, Chester. It's too permanent. Funny how many men dies at daybreak, ain't it? I mean, when everything else is starting up and all. Well, I guess when you have to die, it's as good a time as any. Where do you reckon his brother is by now? Rack, I don't know. But we're sure going to have a long ride to catch up with him. Mm. I sure ain't one to hurry up a man about his dying, but I sure would have been glad to have been shut of this place for now. What's the matter, Chester? Don't you enjoy southern hospitality? Mr. Dillon, I have to walk around in that old shack on my tiptoes. She's after me every minute about not hurting her things. Gracious goodness, I couldn't hurt them old things if I tried. Well... We can be leaving soon now, Chester. We've done about all we can do. Right? Uh, Get out! Don't in them bushes. Yeah, and my guns are in the house. Come on! I believe it's customary. Will you get out of the way, please? I want my gun over there. What do you suppose that crazy fool's thinking of? I don't know, Chester, but he must have a good reason for sticking around. His brother? No, I don't think he'd take on these odds when he was pretty sure his brother was done for. I think he's got another reason. Where's the saddle that came off Miller's horse? We're over there in the corner. Oh. Be careful of your heavy footsteps. Yeah, let's see now. Yeah, that's it. No wonder he stuck around. All that money makes up into a right for a little package, don't it? Yeah. Mr. Dillon, I don't understand this sudden rudeness on your part. I'm sorry, ma'am, but I'm not too polite when I'm being shot at. And you stay away from those windows. I thank you not give me orders in my own house. Chester, let's push the piano in front of that window over there, huh? Right. We're like sitting ducks this way. You will not touch my chair. All with right, come on, Chester. Yes, oh, oh, don't harm it. Oh, don't harm it. All right. Now I'll watch the front. You take the side, huh? I don't think you'll wait long. How right. long must I endure this? How long? As long as that outlaw's out there, Miss Hanford. He's not going to let us out of here alive. You're going to stay here tramping around among my nice things until he goes away. I'm afraid so, ma'am. Well, then I'll just order him off my land. Uh, Miss Hanford, come back here. See here, sir. Miss Hanford! You're trespassing. Uh, I want you to ride on... He shot her. Yeah. Ah, there he is, running for the creek. He's down. You got him. Yeah. You go make sure, will you, Chester? Yes, sir. I'll see to Miss Hanford. Miss Hanford. Miss Hanford. I sure did, and you were right. I'm sorry, ma'am. He was no gentleman, was he, Marshal? Trespassing on a lady's property. No, ma'am, he wasn't. He's dead, Mr. Dillon. How's Miss Hanford? Not good. Not good at all. Miss Hanford, we're going to take you into your house. No, no not, not just yet, Marshal. Don't move me. Let me die here on the veranda. Yeah, you'd be more comfortable. Please, Marshal. I won't delay you long. Well, is there anything we can do? I mean, is there any way to make you feel better? If you would just see... If you would just see that somebody takes care of my lovely childhood pan. She gone? Yeah. Well, I can carry her inside now. <laughs> Mr. Dillon? Yeah. She really believed Rack Miller would listen to her and go away, didn't she? Yeah. That he was no gentleman. Well, it's just a shame, that's what it is. His pine sure must play pretty. The way she loved it. Took care of it so good. What are you doing? Oh, I just thought I'd hit me a note or two. She she wouldn't care, would she? No, I guess she wouldn't. What? 
afraid don't play at all. And look here. Under the top. All the strings is rusted away. Just hanging there. Mr. Dillon, this pine ain't made a sound for years. Hmm. Well, I guess I didn't have to play, Chester. Just had to look pretty. It was all she had. is a quote from a speech rendered by that old political character, Elijah Cuddlestone. Now, I, I mean to say, uh, tell you that is, that this man is a radical. A radical, mind you. Why, talk about change. He's used enough platform planks, even planks, that is, in this campaign alone to build you a new courthouse. I say a new courthouse. And still have enough planks left over to construct a warehouse for all of his you past mistakes. Well, Elijah was a bit outspoken, and that's how he used the word radical. Radical comes from radix, the Latin word for root. Actually, today, radical isn't much more than a term of abuse. Before the 18th century, radical essentially meant a person who wanted to get to the root of a matter. Toward the end of the 18th century, a group of English politicos became known as radical reformers because they wanted to revamp the existing political setup. They became a hated crew because folks didn't like change, and radical became a term of low reproach. (laughs) 